Welcome to another edition of Zeek in Action. I'm your host, Richard Baitlick, and today we will be revisiting NetFlow and Zeek data. In our previous video, we took a look at comparing NetFlow records and Zeek connection logs. And in that video, we learned that NetFlow records are created by three pieces of software. There is a NetFlow probe, which is watching traffic and generating the NetFlow records. There is a collector, which receives those records from the probe and writes them to disk. And then there's a viewer, which allows a person to take a look at those records, typically because those records are in a binary format and they need to be decoded. This is in contrast to a system like Zeek, which is directly watching a network traffic stream, trying to make sense of the data, and then writing what it sees to disk, generally in an ASCII readable format um, in either tabs uh, separated value or JSON. In the previous video, I spent a lot of time showing how to set up those two systems so that you could create records of your own and work with them. And we spent a little bit of time looking at the records themselves. But today, I want to get uh, more quickly to the records and do a little bit of compare and contrast and try to show how you can get certain value from one system and perhaps not as much from the other system. Just to sort of situate us within the network security monitoring framework before we take a look at the data itself. I wanted to remind everyone that there are four types of network security monitoring data. The first one, of course, is full content. Full content is a record of everything that is seen on the wire or perhaps through the air. And it's typically viewed with a, a software tool like Wireshark or some other uh, protocol analyzer that can make sense of all of the values that are encoded in the data. The second type of NSM data is extracted content. This is a sort of uh, file that you might get using a tool like Zika Suricata. So for example, if someone were to download an executable or any other type of file that's recognized by these systems, rather than writing everything to disk, just the file itself is written to disk, which you can then feed into file analysis frameworks. The third type of NSM data is an intrusion detection system alert. You typically get this type of data from an IDS engine like Suricata or perhaps Snort. Uh, Z can do a bit of that as well, but it's not its primary purpose. And the idea behind the IDS alert is to look for some, something that a, an analyst or a programmer has deemed to be suspicious or malicious and worthy of generating uh, an alert or a notice. And uh, that's a very valuable form of NSM data as well. And then finally, we have transaction logs. And transaction log is a category for many different types of logs. And I have a, just a few samples here, the connection log, the HTTP log, files log, uh, PE or portable executable log, all of which are uh, generated by Zeek. And of course, Suricata uh, produces a certain uh, set of transaction logs as well. So when we're going to talk about NetFlow logs, where do those fit? Well, NetFlow is a type of transaction log. It's a summary of uh, who talked to who, when, how much data was transferred and a little bit of the nature of the connection using the, the ports and IP addresses involved. Let's turn now to our NetFlow data and see what we can find. If we take a look at the directory where the NetFlow records were stored, we'll see that there's quite a few files here. And if we were to take a look at one, just at random, we would see that these files are encoded in a some type of binary format. So in order to look at them, we need to use uh, a program like nfdump, which ships with the uh, nfdump package. Oh, I need to put a dash r in there in order to see it. So there's our records as they, they stream by. Let's approach this from the perspective of someone who's trying to solve a problem. So let's say that you get a visit from law enforcement or a threat intel team and they say, have you had any systems connect to a certain IP address? And you want to check to see if that's true going through your transaction logs, at least your NetFlow transaction logs we'll start with. So the way you might do something like that would be instead of reading a specific log, which I'm sure you could do, but we're going to take a look at all of our logs here and we're going to pipe that into a grep for the IP address of interest, which in this case is 172.217.12.228. 
and we get back these six records. These six records represent three different connections. We see that that's true because NetFlow records are, are one directional. In other words, these two records uh, represent one connection, the next two records represent another connection, and the final two records represent a third connection. So you could say, yes, I know that uh, on this date, at this time, that I had a successful connection involving my host 192.168.4.182, which just happens to be the IP address of this demo system that we were using to collect activity. And there was data transferred in both directions, both from the destination to the source and from the source to the destination. But this is about it. This is the extent of the data that we have from these NetFlow records. This is version 5 NetFlow and version 9 NetFlow uh, can be extended using templates to show more aspects of this data, but that's not something you just necessarily see a lot of in the open literature when you take a look at it. Um, I think it might be more of a commercial feature if you were to enable that and say your Cisco devices, but if you were to repl replicate the situation we have here using open source uh, probes and uh, collectors and viewers, this is what you get. So why don't we contrast that now with our, our Zeek data. And if I come over here, and I'm already in the, the uh, proper directory for this activity, I'm going to, well, first of all, let's, let's just take a look at what we have to work with. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that we have records for many different types of data. You can see we have connection records, DHCP, DNS, uh, files, HTTP, uh, known hosts, which is sort of a, uh, it's not a direct record of activity that was seen, but it's more of Zeke's interpretation of what it saw over a certain period of time. Same thing with known services. Loaded scripts refers to the scripts that were uh, loaded at runtime by the, the Zeek engine. We have notice logs and also NTP software, SSH, SSL. Um, the the uh, packet filter is another one of those runtime state of Zeek type logs. Same thing with stats, or stats is uh, over time, this type of uh, data that Zeek was seeing. And then finally the weird log, which is uh, sort of a catch-all for various odd activities that Zeek might uh, notice. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for that same IP address, except we're going to just check the connection log to do a, a comparison. So I'm going to uh, first show you, um, well, I'm just going to do it the right way first. Let's teach teach you the right way before I show you uh, something that, that might cause a problem. Now, I'm using the dash H, H flag here because I want to suppress the output of the file name uh, when I do this zgrep. And I'm using zgrep because you'll notice these files are all uh, gzipped. So I'm going to uh, zgrep for the IP address in question, 172.217.12.228. And we'll look in the con logs. And I'm going to pipe that into JQ to make it look a little bit neater. And you'll see we get three records as well. We get a record for this connection, this connection, and finally this connection. And you'll recognize the source IPs, or I should say the uh, source port. The IPs are all the same. The source ports are the same as what we saw previously as well. There is more data to work with here, which is nice. And this is really the reason why I wanted to record this video is to show you that NetFlow is sort of uh, almost like an IDS alert in a way, um, not in terms of the data that's presented, but in sort of how you handle it. Uh, an IDS alert tends to be not the end of an investigation, uh, or sorry, uh, an IDS alert tends to not be the um, final say on the matter. When you get an IDS alert, you need to do more investigation. But if you only have IDS alerts, then you're kind of stuck. You're left seeing something potentially interesting happening, but you don't have any more data to go on necessarily. Of course, you could pivot into host-based data, but let's just say that we're looking at the network aspect right now. Um, so that's kind of what NetFlow is like. Uh, NetFlow log will tell you something happened, but there really isn't a whole lot more to go on other than to look at other types of NetFlow logs. And this is really an area where transaction logs produced by a system like Zeek, uh, and then to some extent Suricata with some of the transaction logs that they prevent, or, or, uh, present. The Zeek logs that you have here tell you a lot more about what's going on. The question is, uh, well, do they exist and how do you get to them? 
Well, the first thing we'll notice here is that we have in the connection log, we have a UID. And this UID allows us to look for activity involving the same connection across many of the different log types that uh, Z creates. So why don't we do that? We're going to look for this UID and see if we get any other hits. So I'm going to, again, zgrep. And I'm going to, again, suppress the file name. Um, without that, JQ would actually I'll tell you what, let's not do that so that you see what we're dealing with here. I'm going to zgrep for that UID across all logs, and I'm just going to do it that way. So we get three results. We get the con log that we had been looking at earlier. We get a files log, and we get an HTTP.log. Now, I would have guessed that we would have gotten these other types of logs, and the reason is, if we go back up here and we look at our original connection, Zeke recognized that it saw not only TCP, but HTTP. And if it sees the HTTP, uh, if it recognizes HTTP, it's generally going to create an HTTP.log entry, which is what we have down here. Now, this can be a little bit difficult to read, um, so you might be tempted to do something like this, just pass this all into, G into JQ. The problem is JQ doesn't like the data that it sees here prior to the JSON. So we know that this is a con files and HTTP, so we're going to use our same trick again to suppress the file name. And now we have these three logs, and we'll just have to recognize them for what they are. Um, the con log, very easy to recognize. And then here we have our um, files.log. You see that the source says it was HTTP. It gives you an MD5, a SHA-1. Uh, the file, um, if it was extracted, it would be named this. I don't know if it were actually have uh, Zeke set up to do extraction. I suppose I could take a look at that and, and figure it out. It's not uh, critical to what we're looking at. Uh, and then also we have down here the HTTP.log. And this is where I think Zeke really can shine. Um, you're not doing any more work to get this type of data, and yet you're getting this really rich, useful information. So you can see, for example, that the requesting host did a GET request to um, on the HTTP server side for www.google.com. Uh, the URI was just the, the root there, and um, the user agent was links. And in the last video, I was using links to visit uh, google.com. And in fact, I didn't um, uh, uh, I didn't specify to use HTTPS. So I just put www, and so it gave me HTTP, which is nice because it gave me this nice clear text log that we could work with. And then we have um, the file UID down here. Now, this file UID should be reflected. Yeah, there it is. This file UID in the HTTP.log is the same file ID that appears here in the files.log. And I didn't need to necessarily link those two because I had the con ID, which is, which is nice as well. But this should show you this type of data that you can get from Zeek that is really valuable to figure out more about what's happening with these connections. Let's take another example that you might hear. Um, Let's say you wanted to know if anyone had ever visited www.google.com. So one of the, the ways you might do that would be to query for DNS. Well, if I take a look at my flow records, I don't have that. I would have to make some assumption that google.com was using certain IP addresses and then query for those, which is essentially what I did here. The, the, this 172.217.12.228 IP address is uh, one of Google's IP addresses. So that's not directly answering my question. It's sort of answering a derivative question or one that is based on assumptions. But I can uh, ask that question if I just look in my my logs that, that Zeke pr pr produces. So uh, one way I might do that would be to look in my um, DNS logs. And I'm going to look for www.google.com. And I might also want to look for a specific IP address. So I would want to know, did 192.168.4.182 ever look for that? Otherwise, I'm going to get a lot of other traffic that will fill my screen here. So let's see what we get when we do that query. And we get a couple of records. Actually, it looks like we get quite a few records. So here's the first one. 
And what's nice as well about about uh, Zeek DNS records is you get the query and the answer in the same record, which is pretty nice. So, you know, the query here was for www.google.com, and here's the answer down here, the IP address that this system ended up uh, looking at. You, when looking at these records, you might wonder, well, the timestamp is kind of a bear to work with, and I will agree with that. It's probably the best way to store the data. Uh, it's not necessarily the best way to look at it. So um, typically when you're using a SIM or something like that, it'll do some kind of um, transfer for you, or it'll apply its own timestamp as the record is, is logged, which is often close enough to the time you're investigating. But if you did need to do sort of a command line transformation of what that would be, you can use something like this. And you can see here that that record was created at uh, 2.23 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which incidentally um, corresponds to our records over here, which are in uh, military time, but also in the same time zone. Now, let's see if we have any other uh, items that we might want to look at here. The SSL record might be interesting um, if we were using an encrypted connection for, for Google. Um, why don't we just take a look at it just to see what might be in there. We'll do uh, Zcat on the SSL log and we'll pipe that into JQ and just see what kind of records we're looking at. Um, oh yeah, you might remember when we did the last video, we took a look at docs.zeek.org and um, here we have some SSL records for that. This is uh, something to uh, consider as well. Um, what do the flags mean here in the SSL history? So um, we can take a look at that. Uh, let's see, let's look at SSL history. And Let's look, there we go. So here, here's the uh, docs.zeek.org entry for SSL history. And if we look at our record of interest, we have a CS little i capital I. So the capital C means the client sent a hello. The little s is the server hello. And that was the other side of the connection. So that must be why it's uh, lower cased. Um, Client sent letters are capitalized. Yeah, so the server replied with a, a little uh, with a little s meaning hello or lowercase s, and then we have a lowercase i and a capital i. So the i means change cipher spec. So both the server and the client sent SSL information where it uh, requested a change of the cipher spec. Again, these are details you just don't get when you're looking at NetFlow records. And again, it's not expensive to capture this data. Now, of course, you can probably get NetFlow records that are just straight layer three, layer four data quickly off of a routing device that is producing them. But uh, if you properly provision a Zeek sensor, you're gonna be grabbing all this information that at the time you're collecting it, you may not know it is that critical, but once you need it, it could be the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful investigation. So let's see if we have anything else that we might uh, find interesting. Um, let's just see what other entries we had in the files log to see if any of that might be. Actually, we don't have to do that. So we have a couple of other, let's see, we have a file here from HTTP, another one from HTTP. So we've got these three from HTTP. Um, these are probably all related to that same web page activity involving Google. And yeah, the same IP addresses are all there. Let's see what else we have while we're looking at it. Um, let's look at that SSH traffic. This is another area where I think um, Zeek really shines. Here we have 
uh, several records involving uh, remote IP addresses and this machine that was just sitting around doing its business. And we can see that we have uh, clients logging in to the system. A couple of different, um, different SSH versions that were there. So again, when you're looking at this data, you might not necessarily know exactly what it's useful for. But uh, once you know what to look for, it might be the very thing you need to solve an investigation. And that's kind of one of the tenets of network security monitoring as well, is that um, prior to the incident, you don't necessarily know what will be most important. But once, you're, once you know what to look for, it's much better to have that information than to wait around for the intruder to return and duplicate the problematic activity. Much better to have the evidence of it you need in your logs, um, even if you don't use it actively, but once you know it, you, once you know to look for it, it's there and you can uh, make sense of it. All right, so I hope that this was an interesting video. I hope that you were able to take a look at the differences and similarities between uh, Zeek and NetFlow connection logs and see that they each have their value, they each have a purpose. In many cases, you may only be able to get NetFlow records. That might be the only thing you have at a certain site. And in cases like that, I've, I've been in those shoes. I've been thankful to have that data because it was able to tell me something about what was happening. But I then used that, that foothold in order to justify getting proper instrumentation, a full NSM stack, as opposed to just simply having a, a layer three, layer four, connection log essentially and not even a full connection log just you know IPs talking to ports is not a whole lot to work with um, and then of course once you can get something like Zeek in place a whole new world will open up uh, to you in terms of what you can investigate and when you augment that with uh, full content data smart or or full the um, and IDS and engine capability when you take Zeek's extracted content and it's full transaction logs you put all those together with the other elements of nsm data you have a really great capability and of course we don't want to forget our friends who work on the host base side or on the infrastructure log side or even on the human side you know, the human intelligence who is providing information about what's going on all of those aspects of security work to help us to do detection and response Remember, if you like this video, please uh, subscribe to the Zeek channel. We try to put out content that we find uh, people ask for and, and that they hope uh, educates them and possibly entertains them. I'm not sure uh, <laughs> who else finds this sort of work entertaining, but I do enjoy making these videos for everyone. Uh, feel free as well to hit the little button that says uh, get notified when new videos come out. We try to do uh, more premieres of these videos these days so that we can interact with you online. And finally, uh, if you would like to uh, join the community in terms of interactions with the mailing list or the Slack channel, uh, just go to www.zeek.org and uh, click on the part of the menu there that talks about connecting with community. There's lots of different ways to do that, whether it's uh, online or phone calls or, or uh, possibly in person. So uh, with that, thank you for watching the latest edition of Zeek in Action, and I will see you next time.